us here, we have Knoxville. This is their hazmat unit that's soon to go into service. Uh, it's finishing up its inspections here and it will soon ship out to go to the customer. Let's get a look at this rescue. Starting off in the front bumper area, these folks do a heavy duty 12 inch channel bumper. This has a worn 16.5 TI winch up in the front bumper, feeding through here at the bottom of the fair lead. You also have an auxiliary tray over on the side here for your extra chains and bindings. For the cab, the crew at Knoxville chose this Cyclone 2. This is our extra short 30 inch CA cab. Two door with a large transverse compartment behind. The interior of this truck features stainless steel door boards, all hardened interior, upper and lower, as well as all the wall panels. And the ceiling panel are also done in hardened material with some extra insulation in there to keep it from sound and thinning. Moving along into the transverse area of the cab, you see we pick up a very large transverse compartment. They have this end uh, on this side cordoned off. So this will be a driver's gear compartment and maybe some small stuff as well as we're mounting the battery chargers and some of the uh, onboard systems in the upper part of the cabin. Now this truck is a little different from a normal truck that we build. Uh, this one is a, is a combo truck, is what we call a combo truck. So any truck with E1 that's a combo, of course we, as we're known for, the extruded aluminum construction throughout the body, both the combo module and the walk around portion. Um, a combo truck gives you the opportunity here to take a, a, a little module in the front here and you can basically configure this module for whatever your department needs. In this instance, it's a hazmat truck, so this is a little hazmat work office. They opted to put a door, both an entry door and an exit door on both sides of the truck so you can get out on either side, which is, whichever is safer on scene. Also in the combo module area, because of the short cab, both sides in the lower feature you. These are the chassis batteries. Then you also get a good little compartment here, which is the inside is the base plate for the upper cabinets inside. So this gives you a little bit more storage space, place for chargers and some of your gear, as well as a place, of course, for the batteries. You can also see that Knoxville did a very hardened interior in here too, so it's very durable, especially since it's a hazmat truck. If you have any kind of caustics that you're spilling or testing. This way it keeps it, you know, it's a very clean environment, easily to clean up. The cabinetry that you see in here from inside, these will be bagged hazmat suits on both sides. You see they're ventilated inside so it keeps those, that gear fresh as well. We've got some, some LED lighting in here to light your workbench. Of course you've got your, your communication speakers, radio, 110 volt, USB outlet. You have a 12 volt distribution box here. We opted, or Knoxville opted to add some dry erase to the back board here so they can take notes. And then this little monitor that you see here is for the weather station that's on the back of the truck. Upper cabinetry in the back here is basically a couple lift ups with a little bit of extra storage above for some more gear and testing equipment. Now starting with the street side compartments, we'll first notice up at the top of the truck, we have a very large, carefree, 120 volt awning. This is painted and recessed into the body to give it a nice clean line and where it's concealed into the body to prevent damage. Looking at the street side compartment, Knoxville opted and they use a lot of slide masters with some pack track tool boards on them. So they have the upper portion of the compartment slide master with a small pack board at the top. And then below, of course, they have a large built-in C-Tech cabinet. Moving along into the second compartment on the truck, you can see we have large transverse. This goes all the way through the body of the truck to the other side. You have a couple CMW cord reels up in the top. These are 200 foot 10-3 uh, cable. Down below in this next compartment, you'll have your generator output controls. You have a half transverse slide master in here with a pull-out tray. Moving into the wheel well area of the truck, you can see Knoxville chose to do the painted wheel skirt liners as well as your SCBA doors in here. You've got two bottles in the front. You've got a single bottle in the fill in the back. The upper compartment over top, this has a half also transverse. This is a half train slide master halfway across the truck. You also have your light controller for the, uh, the light mask for the command light tower, which is up above. 
Now you can see a small box in the area from the back of the truck. This is actually a storage compartment for long-handled tools coming in from the back of the truck. Moving into the rear compartment on the street side, Tazmat rake features another slide master bottom tray with a packed board on the top. This will be set up to bracket and add uh, dressed packs for the guys. I think they're four on one side and two on the other. This other here, area here in the forward compartment is extra cylinders. So this is a pack uh, uh, cylinder storage. Looking at the tail of the truck, this is something that E1 does very well. It has the spare compartments going up to the top. Basically gives you a lower compartment that goes into the stair. You know, the first stair ends at the frame. The second stair, this one's a little deeper. This one holds a Stokes basket and has a tunnel. Now the neat thing about this one is that in the elevation that it is in the side of the truck, you're between the SCBA bottle tubes and the wheel well. So it keeps you from in, intruding into any of your compartments and you can still fit a long Stokes basket. This one goes to the depth of the side compartment where the stair starts. So this one's about 40 inches deep. This is just an open storage. And then your top one is that tunnel that's deeper for some long handled tools that we saw in the tops of the compartments. Now as you can see, as we mentioned in the combo module at that monitor, this truck also has a weather station. This is a pole that it will mount on. It's a coastal weather station. So they can basically twist this, put this pole up, and put their control head on there from the work area, and then they have onboard weather control for uh, cloud disbursement and such. So the top of this truck is a basic walk-around truck as far as the body design. So you have the large rooftop compartments. You can see these are extremely large. They're deep. Based on the height of the cab, and in this case the height of the walk-in portion of the body, brings the top of the, 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 the body up a little bit, so you get some a lot of bonus area in these compartments as we even out the build. If you would like more information on how we can configure a custom truck such as the one behind me, or a commercial unit, get with your local Rev E1 dealer and let us see what we can put together for you. Thank you very much and have a great day.